Okay. <clears throat> so today's scriptures will be from Deuteronomy and from Luke. So we'll look at Deuteronomy 8, verses 1 through 11 and 17 through 20. A call to remember and obey. Be careful to obey all the commands I am giving you today. Then you will live and multiply, and you will enter and occupy the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for these 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you would obey his commands. Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and feed, then feeding you with manna a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone. Rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. For these 40 years, your clothes didn't wear out and your feet didn't blister or swell. Think about it. Just as a parent disciplines a child, the Lord your God disciplines you for your own good. So, oh, <clears throat> so obey the commands of the Lord your God, by walking in his ways and fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land of flowing streams and pools of water with fountains and springs that gush out in the valleys and hills. It is a land of wheat and barley, of grapevines, fig trees and pomegranates, of olive oil and honey. It is a land where food is plentiful and nothing is lacking. It is a land where iron is as common as stone and copper is abundant in the hills. When you have eaten your fill, be sure to praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. But that is the time to be careful. Beware that in your plenty you do not forget the Lord your God and disobey his commands, regulations, and decrees that I am giving you today. He did all this so that you would never say to yourself, I have achieved this wealth with my own strength and energy. Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. But I assure you of this, if you ever forget the Lord your God and follow, follow other gods, worshiping and bowing down to them, you will certainly be destroyed. Just as the Lord has destroyed other nations in your path, you also will be destroyed if you refuse to obey the Lord your God. <clears throat> We'll go to Luke 22, verses 14 through 20. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. Then he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you bow with me, please? Lord Jesus, we, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this church. We thank you for everyone here that was called to be with us and to be with you today. We just thank you, Lord, for being such a wonderful Savior. We thank you for everything that you've given to us. And we ask for your forgiveness for those times that we just get too busy. We're too involved in other things to see your blessings, to see your miracles as we live our lives. So Jesus, we, we come today with thankful praise. We, we thank you certainly for having Pastor Larry come back to service this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your care. We thank you for your protection and your healing. We certainly thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your undying and ultimate love. And certainly, we thank you for the greatest gift of all, the gift of salvation. So we bless you, we serve you, we save you. Keep us ever faithful to your love and your guidance. In Jesus' precious and most holy name, we ask and pray. Amen. Well, what good is it for us to remember something if we don't 
use what we've learned or experienced. And what good is it if we remember Bible stories and scripture verses, but don't apply those truths to everyday lives? What good is it to know about Jesus, but not accept him as Savior and Lord who directs our lives now and provides us with eternal hope? The three scriptures that we read this morning are three that remind us to remember what God's done for us, how we were created by him, how he's provided for us in the past and the present, how in his grace God sent Jesus to be a needed savior. And by remembering all this, then we can anticipate that God will continue to care for us throughout our earthly lives and provide eternal glory for all who accept his grace and live in obedience to his commands. But often we have short memories, don't we? We easily forget. We don't remember or often think about all the ways that our holy, gracious God has blessed us. We get so wrapped up in treasures and pleasures of this world that we easily can serve worldly idols instead of God. We forfeit the peace and the purpose that God has planned for our lives. And so often we fail to live our everyday life with that assurance of eternal glorious inheritance that God wants us to have. So I think today's scripture passages challenge us not to let that happen, but instead to remember what God has done for us, what God is providing and wants to give us right now, and then to live with that great anticipation what God has in store for his true children in the future. Well, Moses gave the Israelites such a challenge in Deuteronomy chapter 8, as Sue just read. For here, Moses called the people to remember and obey God. And Moses challenged them to obey all the commands of God that he was telling them. And Moses said, if you do, then you will be prosperous and will enter and occupy the promised land that God swore to give your ancestors. But, but if you refuse to obey God's command and you follow other gods, whatever idols that you take your time and worship in your life, following other gods, then certainly you will be destroyed. Destroyed as a nation of people, just as God has destroyed the nations who came against you in your journey. Now, I certainly think that when Moses is saying, be destroyed here, it also refers to eternal destruction being separated from God forever because of worshiping other gods, putting other things in God's place. Remember in the New Testament in John chapter 3, probably that most famous verse that all of us know, John 3.16, it says there that those who believe in Jesus, God's Son, will not perish. Will not perish, will not be destroyed, will not be eternally separated from God, but have eternal life. And then just two verses later, at verse 18, Jesus said that anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged, already separated from God, suffering under God's wrath because of sin and disobedience. So here in Deuteronomy chapter 8, Moses is urging the Israelites to make the choice, to make the choice to obey God's commands and not fall under God's wrath and be destroyed. In this Deuteronomy passage, Moses is challenging the Israelites to remember, to remember how the Lord cared for them, sometimes miraculously. As they escaped from Egypt, as they wandered through the wilderness for 40 years with that goal of the promised land in sight. Though providing the Israelites with safety, with food, with water, clothes that didn't wear out, God often did have to discipline his people, reminding them that we humans don't live by bread alone, not by just the things of this physical world, but by every word, every command that comes from the mouth of God. Through obedience to God, by walking in God's ways, Moses tells the people that their long-awaited promise will be fulfilled 
be fulfilled when God brings them into that good promised land, rich in food and resources. When they've settled there and they're prosperous, Moses tells them then, be careful. Be careful. Be aware that in your plenty, you don't forget the Lord. Don't forget the Lord your God and disobey his commands. Now, can you imagine that happening? Do we ever forget God when we're enjoying prosperity and comfort? Well, Moses' words to the Israelites certainly apply to us today in the 21st century as well. In verse 18, Moses said, remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you the power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. In the Luke account that Sue read for us, it's the account of the Last Supper that Jesus shared with the disciples. And in this passage, Jesus is telling his disciples to remember, to remember what God's done, to remember what God was doing right then and what God was about to do through Jesus' death and resurrection. Now, the supper that they came together to eat was the Passover meal. And every item of food and drink in that Passover meal had symbolic meaning of the Passover. And remember the Passover, what it was? When God miraculously saved the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Remember how the Israelites were to put the blood of the goat or the lamb on the doorpost on the sides and the top so that God, would, when he would come and strike down the firstborn of every house, he would pass over the house that had the blood on the doorpost. The Passover meal was the Israelites' salvation celebration. It's when remembering when God saved them from the hand of the Egyptians. Well, Jesus turned this Passover meal with his disciples into a salvation, remembrance, and celebration for them and for us today. Now, certainly, that night when Jesus met and ate with his disciples, and in the next few days that followed, the disciples didn't see any celebration. Didn't see its celebration as Jesus was arrested and beaten and crucified. But after Jesus' death and resurrection, the disciples understood. Understood the importance of Jesus' sacrificial death of him being that perfect Passover lamb who took the sins of the world upon himself, making a way for all believers to be restored to God. Jesus' death provided the way for salvation and forgiveness. His resurrection conquered the power of death, so that today as we come to take the bread and the cup, we do it in remembrance of Jesus' perfect sacrifice. We celebrate Celebrate Jesus' victory over sin and death, and we anticipate the fulfillment of the kingdom of God when Jesus returns. Jesus' followers, with united spirit and resurrected bodies, will enjoy the glory of a new heaven, a new earth, where sin and sickness and death, all those things will be non-existent. So the bread and the cup that we take today are very much like that food and drink of the Passover meal. They're remembrances, remembrances of God's salvation that he offers to all who will receive it and live it out. The bread Jesus offered to the Last Supper, he said, was to represent his body, his body which is given to his followers to take and eat in remembrance of Jesus. Remembrance of him giving his life for our salvation. And the cup, Jesus said, is the new covenant. The new covenant between God and his people. A covenant confirmed with my blood, Jesus says, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. So today, as we take the bread and the cup, we're to remember Jesus' willing sacrifice. We're to reaffirm our faith in Jesus as Savior to strive to obey his commands, and to anticipate the glorious eternal inheritance he's prepared for us. 
But that inheritance Jesus talked about in the beginning of John 14, which we didn't read together today. But in the beginning of John 14, Jesus is reminding us of him being God's son, therefore our savior, that he's the way for us to be made acceptable to a holy God. He tells us to remember his words, the very word of God the Father, and to help us know and remember his words, the sacrifice for sin, how God sent the Holy Spirit, who teaches us everything that Jesus taught. Well, with the Spirit's power and teaching, we can live with peace of mind and heart, Jesus says, a peace that's different a peace that's more complete than anything the world can offer. The Spirit's guidance, strength, and comfort is available to us right now and throughout our earthly life, available to anyone who trusts Jesus as Savior and Lord. With the Spirit's guidance, then we can anticipate a deeper communion with Jesus as we live out our everyday lives. Remember, Jesus stated, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that no one can come to the Father except through me. Jesus is our way, our way to God right now and for eternity. Jesus shows us the truth, which, the truth of God, which never changes and never ends. Jesus gives us life, eternal life, which we experience as abundant, meaningful life here on earth, and have that assurance and anticipation of God's heavenly kingdom when our earthly days are done. But in the very beginning of John 14, Jesus tells us, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. There's more than enough room in my Father's house. That's the promise of our anticipated heavenly inheritance. And then Jesus went on to say, I go and prepare a place for you, and said, and you know the way to where I am going. Well, Thomas, one of Jesus' closest disciples, said, we don't know where you are going, for they didn't understand that Jesus had to die to fulfill his earthly purpose as sacrifice for sins. They didn't think that he was so soon going to return to heaven, so Thomas asked, How can we know the way to where you are going? And that's when Jesus replied, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. God, with love and abounding grace, sent Jesus to be our Savior. Let us remember that and be thankful. Let us live lives worthy of such a gift. And let us live with great anticipation of what the Spirit can and wants to do in our lives for the rest of our days here on earth, and live with that even greater expectation of God's glorious, never-ending inheritance for all who know Jesus as Savior and Lord.